Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. In today's video we are doing the second part of a new series I have going which is homemade versus store bought. So today as you probably can tell from the title we are doing a burger. So I actually haven't really made burger patties much in the past but I really wanted to challenge myself to actually make the burger patty as well as the whole burger then compare that with a store-bought burger. So I decided to order a burger from a local burger joint and then I made my own. I will show you now how I made it and then at the end we have the verdict and this one is very interesting so make sure you stay tuned to the end and yeah I hope you enjoy this video. I will see you soon. So first up, we just need to prep our veggies for the burger patties. I'm using half of a red onion here. You could use any type of onion, but this is just what I had on hand, so I decided to use that. Then I'm using one large carrot, and you just want to grate that up nice and finely. And finally, one, I think I would call this like a medium-sized beetroot. It was pretty small. You just want to peel the skin off. The way I did it was I held the end and kind of peeled it down towards me so I didn't get my fingers all red because the beetroot is very messy. Um, top tip, as soon as you get it on any surface or on your hands, just wash it straight away because um, otherwise it can stain. Anyway, now we are going in to cook up our onions on a hot pan with some olive oil. And you just want to cook that for about two minutes until it becomes translucent. Then you want to add in the rest of your carrot and beetroot and cook that all through. It might take up to about five minutes for it to fully cook. So you just want to keep stirring that every now and then so it doesn't stick to the pan. If it is starting to stick to the pan, just add a bit of extra olive oil in there um, or whatever you want to add in. And then we're going in with some spices. So here I am adding in about one teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of garam masala, half a teaspoon of cumin, as well as half a teaspoon of dried thyme. And so you wanna cook that through and then taste it and see if you think it needs a bit more. It's okay if you don't put too much because we can always add in some when we are blending it in the food processor later. So once that is all stirred through, you wanna take that off the heat and leave it to cool for a few minutes before going on to the next step. So now I'm putting all of our ingredients into a high speed food processor and blending that until it is well combined. All the exact ingredients are in the description box below. So if you wanna make this recipe, check that out. I actually have a link to a blog post of mine so you can check out some extra photos and stuff to help you make this at home. And then I just added in some extra spices here because I just thought it needed a little bit more and you can taste this and adjust to your preferences. So here is the final batter and you just want to form that into some little patties and then we are going to cook them on the stove. So I'm just spraying my pan with some olive oil and then we are cooking them for about three minutes on each side. So I just set a timer for three minutes to remind me when to flip them. So after three minutes have passed, you want to flip them over and they should look something like this. They might still be a little soft in the middle. So what I did here was because I actually made it ahead of time, I put them in the fridge for a few hours and then when I wanted to heat it up, I just put the patty into the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius just until it was warmed through. So maybe like five or 10 minutes and that actually cooked the patty all the way through. So it's fine to eat as it is from the pan. However, if you want a more well-cooked patty, I would suggest putting in the oven for five to ten minutes just to kind of cook through. I also cooked up some caramelized onion and charred pineapple as you just saw and now it's time to assemble the burger. So here I have used a lovely wholemeal roll. I just got it from Baker's Delight and I heated it up in the oven. I put some avocado, lettuce, the patty, caramelized onion, pineapple as well as some barbecue sauce. All right so now it is time for the all-important taste test. I have not tasted any of these yet. I think I'm gonna start with my one just because, you know, I'm just gonna start with mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut it in half, I think, because I don't think I'll be able to eat both of these burgers. All right. This is what it looks like on the inside. It looks really good, actually. I'm quite keen. I'm gonna take a photo. Also, 
yeah, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I post a lot of like behind the scenes stuff on there. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, feel free. If you don't, don't. But anyway, <laughs> let's taste this. Mm. It's really good. I'm so glad I put the pineapple in. Like the pineapple and the caramelized onion just really makes this. It's actually really good, like, I'd probably rate this. Like, I mean, it's the best burger I've ever made myself, so 10 out of 10 for my own self. Probably like 9 out of 10 from all the burgers I've had before. It's pretty good. Let's try the store-bought one. So this is an Impossible Burger Patty and I've never actually tried it before so I'm pretty keen. This looks like, it looks like it's a McDonald's burger to be honest. Um, I'm just gonna cut it in half as well so you can see. Okay, so my cat is trying to open the door so Apologies, that was Mocha opening the door handle. If you didn't know already, my cats can open door handles. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the inside. Ooh, it's falling everywhere. It has a vegan mayo in it, bacon cheese. It also has like some special sauce um, and lettuce and the tomato and a patty. So let's give it a go. This literally tastes like McDonald's. I haven't had a McDonald's burger since I was like 10 or something because I've never really been a massive fan. So like literally, I'm being 100% honest right now, I way prefer mine, <laughs> like way prefer. Which is honestly shocking for me because I thought that I'd prefer the store-bought one. The store-bought one actually cost me like $17 plus a $5 delivery fee. So it was like $22 in total. Whereas this, like obviously the bun was like a dollar and it was pretty cheap to make this patty because it's all like ingredients I mostly had at home. I just had to buy a can of black beans and a beetroot. Everything else I had at home already. And then like we already had some pineapple at home. We already had onion, we already had avocado. So this was really, really cheap to make and it is honestly so good. Like, 100%, the homemade one is a winner by far. Like, honestly, I just, I can't stop eating it. Mm. And like, to be honest, if you look at it, like this patty, the beetroot patty that I made, I mean, it looks more, I mean, I don't know if it looks more meaty, they both look meaty. Like it, it literally looks kind of like a beef patty, even though it's beetroot, because ooh, the beetroot gives it that flavor. Um, but yeah, I don't even know if I'm gonna finish this other burger, because to be honest, like I don't really like it that much. I'd probably rate it <clears throat> like a four out of ten. I'm honestly like I've never been a big fan of meat burgers, so like maybe that's why. Maybe if I got like a chicken, like a fake chicken burger, I would like it more. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan. Like, I'll eat more of it, but I really just want to like eat mine. So I also have some barbecue sauce here. And some homemade tomato sauce. I didn't make it myself, but it's like a bought homemade one, if you get what I mean. Um, and I made these chips in the oven, which are really yummy. Mm. Well, I'm going to finish off eating all this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Honestly, I highly recommend making this burger at home. It is so, so, so good. And as you can see here, way better than store-bought. It's also a lot healthier because you know exactly what ingredients are in the patty. Whereas this, obviously, it has probably like soy and wheat. I don't really know. Um, you can look it up online, the Impossible Burger ingredients. I know it has quite a few ingredients. It does have vitamins in it, like B vitamins, I'm pretty sure, which is good. Um, however, I take a vitamin B12 supplement anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. And I eat a lot of variety of fruits and vegetables. So 
yeah, I'm not too worried about my vitamin intake. And yeah, it's just the cheese in here, obviously it's processed, the mayo is processed, whereas this is a lot more minimal. Obviously I do have like a store-bought barbecue sauce, but you could make your own barbecue sauce or just leave that out. And yeah, so this has turned out honestly so different to what I expected. I was literally expecting to prefer the store-bought one. I was really excited to try this store-bought one. Um, I've never had the Impossible Burger before, so I was like, I had high expectations. And honestly, homemade is the way to go. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below if you've tried an Impossible Burger before and what your thoughts were. Also, if you've ever made your own plant-based patty at home, let me know because this one actually turned out really, really well. So I would recommend this recipe. All the ingredients for that recipe are in the description box below so you can check that out. And yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.